The next two presentations we have are from smaller British innovation companies that I think you're going to find absolutely terrific. And again, it goes back to the thing that I was describing early on, that this is really a dash tech economy that Britain is creating, fashion and tech, music and tech, education and tech. And our next speaker is Thomas Hegarty from Roll7. Roll7 is a digital agency that specializes in application development and advertising for the mobile space. And uh, Thomas, I'd like to invite you to the stage to talk about some of the tremendous work you guys are doing. Thank you. Um, I've gone with short hair today. Uh, I didn't get the memo, unfortunately. So I'll have to just stick with it. Um, yeah, Roll7, we're, we're a digital studio. Um, we're actually an indie games developer as well. And part of what I want to talk about today is the kind of the friction between how those two things work. A um, little bit of background about myself. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, this is my third company. Uh, I've sold my previous two. The last one we sold about last October was a... Um, education and training company, so we taught youth offenders, uh, unemployed young people, people in care, and we use multimedia as a, the, the way that we can engage them, um, and we found that they weren't engaging in mainstream techniques. Um, when we set up Roll7, we looked at the kind of video game style of stuff that we were doing, and um, what we feel we specialise in is reappropriating other people's tech, other people's ideas. So, the example I'm just going to talk about briefly was a, a game called Focus Pocus. Um, this was a game for young people with ADHD. Now, we used two bits of uh, information tech to put this together. Um, the first one of which was a headset called NeuroSky, which can read your focus and relaxation. And when I usually say this, people go, oh, can it, you know, if you think left, can I move stuff left? If I do that, can it go up? It's not quite that advanced yet, but what it can do is tell when you're focusing, and it can tell when you're relaxing. It's kind of like having a controller and pressing A or B, and you can assign whatever you want to that A or B. Um, we then worked with a, uh, the University of Wollongong in Australia, and they'd done a series of uh, research papers uh, testing with young people with ADHD, and they developed a series of exercises that they could prove um, that helped young people with ADHD, help their concentration, and help them relax. These are two of the key things that ADHD sufferers you know, need to learn to control. So we kind of brought this research together, we brought the headset together, and we put a kind of a fun game mechanic uh, around it. So focus, focus, you're a wizard, and you're at wizard school, and you have to level up and become a wizard, essentially. So you have to concentrate to turn a pig into a trumpet. The more relaxed you are, the faster you can do things with your broomstick. So there's a kind of whole range of ideas that we could do that the young people thought they were playing games, but what they're actually doing is kind of stealthily improving the, their focus and relaxation, which is then going to help them back into school, back into education. So in terms of, that's, that's one side of our business, that's our client side, so that's how, we, that's how we make our money. But what we're also trying to do, as I said, is to you know, make our own games and make our own IP, which is you know, a really interesting part for us. Uh, we just released our first app uh, last month. Um, went on the App Store and on Android, and we, we had, some, had some good response from it, but it was, it was a struggle to get there. Uh, there's kind of, you know, the, the three main things. You've got time, money, and resources. I don't think that's a particular surprise to anyone. But in terms of time, we've got our client work. So, you know, I've got maybe two weeks between this job and this job when I can drag my developer across, get him working on the game, but then the next project's in. So he's like, oh, you know, I was working on that. So you, you have that, you have that problem. Um, you have the money problem. I've got, you know, my balance sheet and my P&L looks okay, but my cash flow is a very different story, as I'm sure most of you know. So I can't take a big chunk of cash out, put it on a developer. And then with resources, again, going back to this kind of clash between the two, um, we couldn't put enough time and energy into marketing, which is the key thing for an app, uh, especially an app that's a game. We're going into one of the most competitive spaces, um, essentially trying to get a number one single, which is incredibly hard to do even harder when you don't market it. Um, we, we put aside my business partner, he had a month to market this thing. Uh, he actually did okay with the kind of limited resource he had, he had no budget as well. Um, but we noticed a bizarre relationship. The, the best of the review, our sales actually went down. 
and we, we couldn't quite work this out, so we kind of sat down and analysed it. And I think what we realised was we just didn't have the visibility and we didn't have the, the community around what we were doing. It was our first app, everything we've been doing is for clients. So it's kind of really made us reassess and reevaluate our business model when it comes to our own IP generation. So with regard to time, we're, we're never going to get more time than we've got. I have to do stuff for clients, otherwise I can't pay the team. Um, so if we've only got a few weeks at a time, then let's make smaller products. Let's kind of you know, do stuff iteratively, put it out, make something in a few weeks. If people like it, we can get their feedback. The next time we've got a bit of time, we can implement those changes and then release again. If people don't like the idea, then we can move on to the next one. Uh, it also helps my developer team, because they're not worrying about the project they left last time, then you can come back to something completely different. Um, in terms of money, it makes it a lot more palatable for myself and my board. Um, I'm not sitting there going, we're going to spend a load of money on this for a year. It might work, it might not. It's like, it's only going to take a month. If it works, great. If it doesn't, we'll learn why. And then in terms of the, the resource and the marketing, there's not, well, as I say, with kind of all the problems I've discussed, there's not a huge amount we can do. We're just not going to have the time. So we have to look back at the iterative process. And what we want to start doing is trying to build a community. So even if only each small game that released gets a few thousand downloads, that's a few thousand more than we had before, and that's more than if we waited an entire year and released to none. So our first five games, you know, might barely make a splash, but hopefully we can build up the community, we can engage them, we can get them moving. So the, the challenge for us really is growth, which I've kind of managed in my two previous businesses, but we never quite had this dynamic. So we've got to cope with the challenges that do come with growth, um, I've got to make sure my clients are happy and they get their kind of quality that they demand and rightfully should get for the money they're paying. Um, we need to continue to develop our own IP, but importantly, most importantly, we've got to make sure we develop our own community. Thank you.